All right, I want to go over this comment from a YouTuber, and I don't want to go over the entire conversation, but I want to show this comment and make a couple of points. Um, this gentleman is against the grace of God. He thinks we have to work for our salvation, and of course, I believe in the grace of God. And so we're having a good conversation here, and I would just want to show what he has said, and then show you a couple of things that ought to clear up a little bit for somebody. Maybe, maybe not, but let's give it a shot. AOG Warrior says, All hyper-grace, false Christians are either foolish or very wicked, Anyway, there's no excuse for them. So, you know, hyper grace is sort of an exaggeration of the grace of God. Uh, people that hate the grace of God, they'll use those sorts of uh, terms because you don't find hyper grace in the Bible, right? So, um, let's continue. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, uh, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal Matthew 25 44 through 46 and I got it highlighted right here in case we want to go back to it and of course there's more to it than just those three verses um, Jesus is laying out all these examples of um, what they ought to do as his disciple and of the obvious um, counter to that is um, being uh, cursed and not being saved and uh, I'll just read this then shall he say unto also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was in hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. All right. So this AOG warrior wants to say, well, right there, Jesus is saying that if you don't do these things, you're not saved. And Jesus makes it very clear right there. So you don't, you didn't do these things, so you're not saved. Um, so let's read this last paragraph here. The very words of Jesus, you wicked servants, you think you're gonna be able in that moment to say, no, Jesus, that's work based salvation to shame and eternal contempt with you all. So he's pretty emphatic at this point that, hey, you gotta do good works. Of course, I, you know. Uh, no, I, I won't say anything, but... So... This is a... It's a good... Verse. Good demonstration. So, let's take what he has shared with us here. <clears throat> this is a great learning opportunity, in my opinion. Okay, so let's take this, and then let's compare it. Or not compare it, let's use a better word let's couple that because you, you know you, the scripture cannot have any contradictions and they, they don't have any contradictions so as a new believer when you're reading the Bible you got to know that there is not one single contradiction in the Bible and there's not one error and everything in the Bible is from God and we can trust fully in the Word of God all right in Matthew 7 verses 21 through 23 Jesus says not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father 
which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then, I, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work in equity. All right, so let's sort of uh, cup. Let's let's do compare a little bit here with Matthew 25. So Matthew 25, he's saying, "Hey, do all these things. You know, minister to the hungry, to the thirsty, to the naked, to the stranger, to to the sick, and to them and that's in prison." Right? He's saying, "Do these things." And he's saying, because you did not do these things, you're cursed, and you'll be thrown into the um, everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You're, you're not going to be saved, basically, if you don't do these things. So, how can, how can we, oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Oh, how do we make these mesh, if you will? Because here in Matthew 7, <clears throat> Jesus is saying, he's, he's given three descriptions. Prophesying, which is teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, have we not prophesied? Have we not taught in the name of Jesus Christ? And in the name of Jesus Christ, have we not cast out devils? And you see, a lot of churches, uh, particularly in big towns, will put together these, uh, I don't know if you call them clinics or what have you, um, where they're helping people deal with alcoholism, drug addiction, and um, anger management, and what have you. All these sorts of different issues, marital problems even. All these different issues that people are having, and they're helping them deal with these devils that are in their life, and helping them overcome them. And, uh, of course, they... They are, um, you know, Christian organizations, so they're, therefore they're doing these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And then also, in thy name done many wonderful works. In the name of Jesus Christ, doing many wonderful works. And you see this happening every day as well, where people are uh, putting together food banks. People are going out and helping mow yards and, you know, fix roofs and what whatever whatever people need there are Christians out there helping people doing many wonderful works now these things that Jesus lists these are all these none of these are sins nobody's going to hell because they are teaching in the name of Jesus Christ nobody's going to hell because they're casting out devils nobody's going to hell because they're doing many wonderful works and so also you look at these examples that Jesus has set that um, you know ministering to the hunger giving food to somebody that needs food giving drink to somebody that's thirsty uh, helping a stranger along giving somebody clothes that needs clothes uh, helping somebody out that's sick and visiting people that are in prison these aren't sins these are good things okay so Jesus what he's doing here in Matthew 25 is he's showing us the way that's that's what the Messiah does right he's showing he's setting the example for us to live by right all these are what we can do to demonstrate our love for one another Jesus is the perfect example for us to live by okay so on one hand we got the law which is do not murder do not kill right I mean doing the law is nothing right it's it to obey the law it's nothing just put, like do not kill what to to obey that is to do nothing at all right to commit do not commit adultery that that that's doing nothing right do not steal that's doing nothing if you don't steal you, you haven't done anything and do not bear false witness so forth that's doing nothing but here 
we are given on the other hand here we have examples of what we ought to do to demonstrate our love for one another and that is uh, feeding the hungry giving drink to those that are thirsty ministering to the stranger helping al them along and you know clothing the, the people that need clothes and um, visiting them in prison and helping those that are sick right these are all good things these are all good deeds good attributes to have and so Jesus is showing us what the attributes that we ought to have again in Matthew 7 we have teaching in the name of Jesus Christ we have casting out devils in the name of Jesus Christ and doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus Christ these are all good things but none of these things will save anybody all right because let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go verse where am I at here right there verse 21 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter in the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven <clears throat> all right doing the will of the father is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ that's the will of the Father now again let's go let's go uh, confirm this if we will if we could I will just do it let's do it this way make this real easy to understand so for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves all right, so this is important not of yourself so doing these good deeds here in Matthew 7 or in Matthew 25 you know feeding the hungry and so forth you're not saved by those good works Jesus is showing us the good works that we and the good attributes that we can have and do but those things aren't going to save us the only thing that can save us is Jesus Christ and for us to be saved we we have to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ we are saved by f grace we are saved by grace I don't know why anybody would hate grace but that's where we've gotten to in this world unfortunately but by grace are you saved by the grace of God All right, you want to call it hyper grace you want to call it super califragilistic expedaliosis grace I don't care it's grace it's the grace of God For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves not of yourselves so your good works your good deeds the good things that you do the many wonderful works they're not gonna save you just so also feeding the hungry that's not gonna save you giving drink to the thirsty that's not going to save you helping the strangers and the naked and the sick and those in prison those attributes and good deeds will not save you not of yourselves you're not saved by yourself all right you're for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God it's not it's not a prize once you're given it, what you know. Once you're given something, um, then press prize is not a good word. It's not, uh, um, you know, I don't know what the, what a word what a good word is for it. But so, it's not something that's given to you, and now you're in debt to it, or in debt to the one that gave it to you. This is a gift from God. All right, because if there was debt, then you'd have to pay it, and you and you can't pay it, and you already started out with one debt, which was already paid for you. So, it's not a debt to be for you to pay for. It's a gift, right? And then verse nine, not of works, lest any man should boast. So all these these are good works. These aren't sins, right? These are good deeds. That these people are doing they're not sins but nobody is saved by them good 
deeds, by these good attributes that they have. They're saved by grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, and so it's it's unfortunate. Uh, I, I think some people just want to believe that they're holy and righteous and supreme, and therefore they want to look down their nose at people and condemn them. And, you know, I, I think that's probably a natural thing for all of us to do is to look at somebody else and say that ain't right you know it's natural right the problem is when it when you you know uh, how do I say it? You, you're a hypocrite to start out with all right because you want to condemn other people but you just as well condemn yourself because you're not perfect either right and so um, this guy wants to make the point that these things that Jesus talks about in Matthew 25 these are good deeds this is these are good attributes to have and they are and we ought to have them. but having these attributes won't save us it's believing in the Lord Jesus Christ so now that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus shows us hey this is the way we ought to be because because if you're not this way, then you're the same as the unsaved people. right? You, you can even argue that you're less than unsaved people because unsaved people have some of these, if not all of these attributes. But because you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you ought to have these attributes and you ought to do these things. right? And I think that Jesus gives us lots of examples for that. Um, you think about the, the the fellow on the cross with Jesus, and Jesus says, "This day will you be with me in paradise." Well, this that gentleman on the cross with Jesus, he had no opportunity to go out and feed anybody, or to give anybody a drink, or to help anybody that was sick, or any of those things. Give clothes to any. He was nailed to a cross, so how he didn't do any of those things. So why was he saved? Because he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Jesus says in Matthew 7 verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, and the will of the Father is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that's all I got.